Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nish Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. We are in chapter 6 where we are talking about the tool support for testing and here we will be having two topics to be covered as a part of this chapter. Test tool considerations and the effective use of the tools. And the very first topic what we are getting started with is test tool considerations. So here we'll be understanding about what exactly the tools are, the basic introduction to the tool that how which can benefit us and what exactly are the different types of tools which can help you with the entire testing process. So the very first thing what we are looking at here is to understand how the tools, tools can really support you with testing and what kind of uh, you know activities generally we can have. So tools can be used to support anywhere any kind of thing which can you do as a part of the test process like tools that are directly used in testing such as like test execution tool test data preparation tool because they have a direct contribution to the entire process sometimes the tools are different in terms of managing the test where or the test management uh, of the resources where we talk about managing the test execution, test uh, data, test cases, uh, defects, requirements and many other things. Sometimes the tools can also be used to uh, do certain investigations and evaluation like the comparators or talking about uh, mapping the ex expected result with actual or also to certain extent like monitoring and generating the graphs of the dynamic analysis and so on. Anything, anything put together is like any such thing which aids you by one or the other way to the testing process. Uh, by any means, you call it as a test tool. So even even if you talk about an Excel sheet is one of the test tools if you are using it to manage your resources or support with any kind of data. So these are certain examples where we talk about like what the test tools are and how that can be used. But when you talk about generally having a specificness of each tool, what can assist you with, let's have a quick look here that what the tools can really help you with uh, from the potential of adding values to the business values to the testing process. Sometimes it is used to improve the efficiency of the test activities by automating, automating the repetitive task or the task that requires significant resources when done manually. For example, when you talk about regression testing, which is quite lengthy and expensive compared to any other thing, like, you know, talking about the basic executions, but regressions are quite often executed, so we can go automation. Manual testing, like, you know, complicated levels, when you talk about performance, having 1,000 users simultaneously would be difficult when you go manual. So in that case, we can opt for going automation. Improve the efficiency of the test activities by supporting manual test activities throughout the test process, like managing the resources, doing the traceability, having a good connectivity between the modules. Version control can also be done with help of tools. Improve the quality of test activities by allowing more consistent testing and a higher level of direct reproducibility, which is like running a particular test quite often again and again just to cross-check that uh, in terms of retesting or maybe you know, repeating certain tests for any uh, meeting the entry criteria or exit criteria could be another aspect. Automating the activities is of course one of the very well and common known fact that where the tool can exactly help you with. And by making use of tools, the reliability has really increased as a part of testing, where we can say that it has more consistent and more reliable result outcomes compared to manual. <clears throat> So these are some of the uh, general purposes of what we can consider the test tool usage for within that test process. But moreover, we are talking about something more important from this segment is understanding the tool classification, that how the tools are being classified throughout the testing process. So we are just trying to categorize uh, different tools in certain categories that how the tools can be managed and understood uh, by a new uh, user of the uh, tool. So very first category what we have here is tool support for management of testing and testware where we have tools like test management tools, requirement management tools, defect management tools, configuration management tools and continuous integration tools. Now here from this particular section you can be asked with a question about the classification that this is one of the tool which falls under these given categories. Now this is one of the category which falls under uh, you know, uh, covers this particular tool. Or maybe they can also ask you that which one of these given options consists of a tool which is more geared for a developer. And here if you see the tools which are marked with D 
uh, stands for a developer specific tool and is not generally used by the testers so uh, be careful with that as well and recall those things when you uh, prepare for the examination so continuous integration tool is a developer tool generally used in TDD or test driven development in agile environment where we continuously keep adding the information other than that, test management tool comprises of all other options. What you can see here, like requirement management tool, defect management tool, configuration management tool, comes together as one option called as test management tool. The other category is tool support for static testing, where we learned about the reviews and all in chapter 3. So we have tools to support the review process as well as a static analysis tool, where static analysis is about uh, looking the defects into the code, like uh, doing a code review and so on, finding the inconsistencies, ambiguities, and insufficient information like, you know, loopholes, uh, infinite loops, undeclared variables, undefined variables, and all. So, of course, it is more used uh, by the developers. The next category is tool support for test design and implementation. So, from here, we are talking about the designing of test cases and preparing and setting up the environment. So if you say that you know, test design tool is one of that, test data preparation tool, model-based testing tool where it is used for cre creating the UML diagrams or business models of the project, acceptance test-driven development tools, behavior-driven development tools, and test-driven development tools. These are the three different frameworks used in Agile quite commonly today. And in these, uh, the TDD is the one which is used specifically by the developers. Tools support for test execution and logging, test execution tools, coverage tools like requirement coverage and code coverage. Uh, code coverage, if you talk about, we have learned about statement coverage and decision coverage, so it is more geared for developer. Test harness, test harness tools are like you know creating the stub and drivers, the dummy modules used in top-down approach and bottom-up approach. Unit test framework tools like JUnit, XUnit, NUnit, which is mainly for developer again. So if you see, uh, you don't really have to buy hard the tools uh, which are more geared for developer. The name itself will tell you that whether it is used by tester or developer. The next category is tool support for performance measurement and dynamic analysis. That's from one of the non-functional parameter needs, that is performance testing tools monitoring tools to monitor the performance parameters and dynamic analysis tool that is to debug the uh, performance or non-functional parameters analysis. So generally the, the, the dynamic analysis tools will help you to find out that why the performance is not up to the mark and what could be the main reason for that. Next the tool support for specialized testing needs where we talk about some special tools which can assist you with some additional activities within the test process and could not be done with the ordinary tools. So we add on, as an add-on, we have a lot many other things to be taken care, like the non-functional parameters as well. So here is a list of tools for that. That is data quality assessment, data conversion and migration tools, usability testing tools, accessibility testing tools, localization testing tools, security testing tools, portability testing tools, and many more other. So if you have heard of any particular non-functional level, any quality characteristic, and of course, for each of them, we have one or the other tool to assist better to them. So all we need to do is just remember these tools, that what falls where in which category, and you will be able to answer a question from here. So that's all from here, team. This is just the part one of the tutorial on the 6.1 of chapter 6. We'll be coming back with the additional information of the same segment with part two of this tutorial. As the content has gone little lengthy, I'm just breaking that into two equal halves. So stay tuned for the part two of this particular topic of chapter six. And I'll be telling you more about what is the benefits and risk involved in using the test automation and a bit about the test automation frameworks. So I'll be coming back with another tutorial on the same. And till then... Uh, just keep learning and exploring about it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to assist you. So, thanks for watching the video team. Till then, happy learning.